got to change my number. I said four. I said three. Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order. It's 6.04 on June 8th, 2015, and we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would uh, Commissioner Claus like to lead us in the pledge? Next is our roll call. Will uh, our director, Ms. Luna Reynosa, assist us with roll call? Please let the record indicate that all commissioners are present with the exception of Commissioner McCann, who has an excused absence. Thank you. We'll move on to item one, and we have a presentation, a recognition of outgoing chairwoman Liz Claus. Um, we had to postpone that uh, presentation from the last meeting to this meeting. Um, and we have a, a little gift for her, a commemorative gavel <laughs> with her name on it to add to her collection because she, she already has like two or three of these. <laughs> um, she began uh, on the planning commission as an alternate and for uh, a year or so was out in the audience waiting for one of us planning commissioners to make a mistake <laughs> and <laughs> vacate our seats. and. Uh, Someone did, and she got seated as a full-fledged uh, commissioner, and um, during her tour of duty, she served as vice chair and chairwoman, and uh, at least two times, three times, probably, and she was our fearless leader, and uh, I always remember her as having a great deal of grace under pressure, <laughs> and she's always been well-spoken and very well-prepared. And it's an honor for me to uh, hand this gavel to you, Commissioner Claus. <laughs> Would you like to uh, say a few words? We'll move on to item two, which if is- Chairwoman uh, O'Connor, if I could, I just wanted on behalf of staff to thank um, uh, now Commissioner, former uh, Chairwoman Claus for her leadership uh, this past year. There were a number of issues that came before this commission and we really appreciated the, the leadership that you exhibited and, and have enjoyed working with you in that capacity and in, continue to work with you. All right. 
Uh, now we'll move on to item two, uh, approval of the minutes of the Planning Commission meeting of May 11th, 2015. Are there any um, uh, corrections or, okay, do we have a motion then? Okay, the uh, motion was made by Commissioner Murphy and seconded by Commissioner Claus. Please register your votes. And, whoops, when it turns red, there we go. We just got our voting system not too long ago, so we uh, have some issues, technical issues. Okay, it's not showing up on the screen. Did okay. All of us? Can you uh, put the votes back up? There we go, okay. All right, the minutes pass, four to zero uh, with Scott McCann absent. We will move on to public comments. Anyone wishing to address the Planning Commission during the public comment section or on an agenda item is asked to complete a request to speak form available at the door. The completed form is to be submitted to the Planning Commission Secretary prior to an individual being heard by the Planning Commission. Any person wishing to address the Planning Commission on a subject other than those scheduled on the agenda is requested to do so at this time. In order to conduct a timely meeting, there will be a three minute time limit per person and an overall time limit of 15 minutes for the public comments portion of the agenda. State law prohibits the Planning Commission from taking any action on a specific item unless it appears on the posted agenda. Are there any requests to speak for public comments? Um. No. No, okay. Then we'll move on to the consent calendar and there are no items on the consent calendar and we go to public hearings item three and it's the appeal of the Community Development Director's decision to approve Minor Conditional Use Permit CUP 15-0006M, allowing the establishment of a new alcoholic beverage outlet, New Business Beverages and More Inc., also known as BevMo, within a new commercial building approved by the city but not yet constructed on, on land located within the city's town center at 34215 Pacific Coast Highway. Is there a report on item three? Yes, good evening, Chairwoman O'Connor and members of the Planning Commission. Before I have Evan Langdon, Associate Planner, give the staff presentation, there are a few opening comments I wanted to say. Uh, tonight's agenda item before you is to consider a conditional use permit associated with the serving of alcoholic beverages at the site. Um, BevMo is a specialty retailer that would be allowed by right under the town center plan if not for the um, serving of alcohol. That is the item requiring the conditional use permit and that is what is before you this evening. Uh, however, there are a lot of, there's a lot of untruthful information that has been circulated and in an effort to ensure that the record accurately, accurately reflects the facts, I did wanna share some information with you. 
Uh, the building site layout and design have been previously approved by the Planning Commission, and when Evan gives his presentation, he will show you again those plans and elevations that were previously approved. Uh, if BevMo moves forward with their project, it will be in that form of that building. It's uh, slightly less than 5,000 square feet. It is fully parked. In fact, it is overparked pursuant to our current parking code, and there are some off-site parking spaces that were included as part of that uh, approval as well. Um, also, they are proposing to for a small format store. They've done a number of these in different communities. Again, it's slightly less than 5,000 square feet at this particular store, and they've done some as um, small as 42,000 square feet um, in some other jurisdictions. Um, but this building has been already approved um, with the, the floor plate that's been mentioned to you. In addition to selling alcohol, BevMo also has a cheese bar with over 300 different types of cheeses, gourmet chocolates, stemware, pre-made sandwiches, party planning, wine tasting, and so uh, there are a number of other goods and services that are being offered from this um, specialty retailer store that I wanted you to be aware of. Um, and it's not the sort of prototypical large format store. So 5,000 square feet is not a, a big box store. Again, it is um, within the parameters of the town center plan as an allowed use. It is the serving of alcohol that requires the conditional use permit. And with that, Evan will provide some additional details. Thank you, Ursula, and good evening, commissioners. Presentation for this item is on your screens. I'll have to give you your bearings, take a step back and orient you as to the location of our, our subject property. Uh, it's located at the intersection of Del Prado and Pacific Coast Highway, right at the end of what we call the couplet of, of our town center plan. The site currently contains what used to be a boat storage facility. Uh, the site is more or less vacant at the moment, contains a couple of outbuildings, uh, and pretty well just asphalt from end to end and with minimal landscaping. Um, the business, the former board storage yard, has been uh, vacant for some time, so not in operation. Um, to reiterate a bit of what Ursula said just a moment ago, there was, and well, rather take a step back even from there, the conditional use permit again, uh, tonight, uh, the, the subject of our appeal is simply for the sale and the service of alcohol. It does not propose, nor did it approve, any physical development of the property. Uh, that aspect of the development of the site was approved separately late last year, December of 2014, uh, and authorized, as Ursula said, the construction of a 4,900 square foot building. Um, the building was more or less approved as a shell. Uh, and so because the, the final tenant wasn't exactly known at that time, the building was designed and the site was planned to accommodate any of a range of potential uses. Um, to that end, the parking was provided on site to accommodate any of a range of uses in compliance with our plan. Uh, in the present use, a retail use that serves alcohol, of course, uh, 16 parking spaces would be required per our current code and for a building at 4,900 square feet. 20 spaces, that said, are provided on site. So the proposed alcoholic beverage outlet would be overparked, as Ursula said, under our current code. In addition, there, are potent or there will be off-site parking, two or three spaces along Pacific Coast Highway that would be adjacent to the property and so theoretically could, could add to the, the uh, number of spaces available. Um, the site plan again on your screen there at the top and one elevation at the bottom. The building would stand at 40 feet, well, roughly 40 feet, a little under, um, at its highest point. That's the circular element that you see at the left of the building. Uh, the structure is only a single story, however, and so the majority of the building is 20 feet or less in height. A couple other elevations. So again, only a small fraction of it would be uh, near that 40-foot maximum. The overwhelming majority of it, as you can see in particular at that lower elevation, is roughly 20 feet in height. Uh, as you can see, the word sign there, it's a placeholder. Signage has not been approved for the building yet. Uh, work is being done to that end. When it is completed, when the concept of signage for the, the building and the site are complete, it will be submitted to staff and then ultimately presented to you in the form of a sign program permit. Uh, and that's triggered by the number of signs that are proposed. So again, signage hasn't been completed yet, and when it is, it will be brought to this, this body for review and approval. And Evan, if I can just interrupt you there um, quickly, we've already been in discussions with BevMo relative to the potential sign application that could come forward, and I'd have to say that in my experience, they have been very open to staff's suggestions and recommendations, and we have indicated that this is in the town center area, uh, the signage is 
you know, meant to be pedestrian oriented and friendly and more of a traditional downtown nature as opposed to a typical retail center. And they have been very open, um, more so than in my experience of um, other retailers to really working with the city on that. And should the conditional use permit be approved, a uh, assigned program would come before you in, in the not too distant future. And then just to finish on the, the building again, it has been permitted and approved. Um, it has yet to be submitted into our plan check process, so no building permits have been issued, but we expect that, that process to begin. We expect submittal to occur shortly. And again, all appeal windows have expired for that <coughs> approval, which again dates back to December. To the conditional use permit that again is the subject of tonight's appeal, to approve a CUP, um, and in fact I should clarify, a, Minor conditional use permit is one that's processed administratively. Um, that's required per code. Um, any alcoholic beverage outlet in the town center requires a CUP, and our zoning code then dictates it be processed by staff and with an ultimate decision made by the community development director. Um, to approve a CUP, we have to make seven different findings, seven statements of fact. Uh, and those findings could be made for the CUP. Uh, and conversely, if a denial is appropriate, there are findings that must be made in order to authorize denial of the permit, and those findings could not be made in this case. Hence, the CUP was approved. To talk to the appeal, uh, the staff report that you have before you speaks to each of the appellant's contentions about the project, and so I'd, I'd refer you to that, but of course, if you have any questions about staff's response to those contentions, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, otherwise, in summary, the, the, the current project was found, as I mentioned with the findings, uh, the project was found to comply with the town center plan, and so it was approved. Uh, and again, conversely, denial would require certain findings that we just could not make. Uh, the, in fact, really that's it. Again, because it does comply, staff's recommendation, uh, does comply rather, staff's recommendation is that you uphold the approval of the CUP and deny the appeal. And again, if there are any questions about anything at all, I'm happy to answer those. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do the commissioners have any questions for staff? One last thing. I'm sorry, uh, Chairwoman O'Connor. I meant to make this statement earlier that the Dana Point Municipal Code does not uh, consider economic impacts. It's not within your purview to consider competition or economic impacts as part of your decision-making process. So, um, you know, typically it's is it an allowed use, yes or no, <clears throat> and in this case it's a conditionally allowed use. So just to remind you of what um, your – you know, purview is in, in this instance. Thank you. Uh, any questions for staff? No? Okay. Uh, I Actually, I do. Um, I have some questions. Um, you mentioned parking. Um, can you uh, give me an estimate of, uh, you know, how many parking spots there are in the parking lot and Mm -hmm. the, the site is proposed with 20 parking spaces. And again, for a building of this size, 4,900 square feet, only 16 are required for a retail use. So the site has an excess, on-site excess of four parking spaces. Okay. And then... Um, Plus you know, an I'm additional three on-site parking as well. You mean on the street? On the or? street, yes, okay. that they are required to construct. So is that 23 you're saying? Or? So that's 23. 20 dedicated on site plus an additional three that are just adjacent to the, the frontage of the building. Okay. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, Commissioner um, Claus and I were both um, on the Planning Commission when we uh, approved the, the initial project. And I... Um, I just want to verify that when trucks make their deliveries, are they just, uh, there are two curb cuts, they can go from one side to the other, or explain the delivery situation? They, they theoretically could, but a condition of approval has been placed in, in the entitlement, in the CUP, that if deliveries occur before 7 a.m., they must enter the site and exit the site in a forward-facing fashion. And the, the thought process behind that is that big trucks backing up, of course, make that beeping noise. Um, and so in an effort not to disturb the surrounding population, again, the truck must go forward if deliveries are occurring at that early, early hour in a forward and exit in a forward-facing fashion. Okay. Um. Madam Chair, can they have uh, the microphone, oh. please? It's awful hard to hear people talking. Can they have the microphones on, please? Uh, all right. Noted. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let me check my other questions. That's it. Any other questions from uh, Vice I, Chair? 
Chairman, uh, Chairwoman, I'd like to just reserve my questions for staff. I want to hear the presentation. Okay. You're good? Yeah. All right. Then we will um, open, uh, I'll open up the public hearing. And my understanding is that the appellant will have a 10 minute presentation, then the applicant will have a 10 minute presentation, and then the appellant will have a five minute rebuttal. Um, so we will bring f up to the um, podium the appellant, and I'm assuming, is that Pat Patterson? Or no? <laughs> I have number one here. Yep. Par Party Time Liquor are their representatives. Oh, okay. Uh, please state your name and city of residence. And you can raise the podium if you'd like. There's a, a switch. Maybe the secretary can help you. There you go. Whatever's comfortable for you. <laughs> see. <coughs> Thank you very much for um, allowing me to uh, present tonight. Uh, my name is John Cha, C-H-A. I'm a partner with the firm of Rains Fellman. Uh, I am here to speak on behalf of the appellants, Mr. and Mrs. Mi Li and uh, Yoon Li. Uh, they have been the proprietors of the party time liquor store across the street from the proposed development. And in addition to uh, my particular clients, uh, I think I'm here representing a large group of people who are behind me who are in support of the uh, planning commission's actions to deny the uh, granting of the CUP. Um, there is mention of the chairwoman and uh, Commissioner Claus being on the Planning Commission in December of 2014 when this building was uh, initially approved. Uh, I'm pretty certain that you will not recall that the building um, approved uh, back in 2014, December of 2014, was initially approved and presented, or initially presented and approved as a minor, minor conditional use permit uh, to allow the establishment of a new bank. The 2000, December 2014 uh, mentions the establishment of a new bank twice within that report, but also, as um, Mr. Langan mentioned, at the time that uh, Planning Commission decision was made. Uh, Mr. Langan also mentioned during his presentation that a tenant, the proposed tenant at that location was not identified. That also appears in the resolution and Mr. Langan supported that by repeating it. But in fact, if you look at the December 8th, 2014 um, Planning Commission uh, determination, a new bank is mentioned twice. So the question is, if the Planning Commission in December of 2014 approved the structure of the building uh, with the ideal of a new bank coming into this location, and all of a sudden here we are in June of 2015 and a BevMo is coming in, the question has to be raised whether there should be additional considerations that, is, that should have been taken place between a bank and a BevMo, which are obviously very distinct entities and very distinct businesses. Um, so I wanted to point that out from the get-go that uh, perhaps the Planning Commission in December 2014, when approving this, may have not had all the information that is relevant for today. Um, the sense that I get from the director of the Community Development department is that uh, in making an administrative decision for a minor conditional use permit that uh, it's being done on a very rote basis, meaning if the municipal code says I should do it, then I will do it, but if the municipal code doesn't say I have to do it, then it is not done. But what that does is it takes away the director's uh, discretionary authority that she certainly has to apply the process in a way that is fair, in a way that takes into consideration the sentiment of the community, uh, that, that takes into consideration the impact to the community. And one of the things that was mentioned earlier um, uh, by the director is that economic competition 
is not something that's stated within the body of or the four corners of the municipal code. Well, that doesn't mean you can't consider it. If it's not there, it doesn't mean you are blind to it or that you should be blind to it because that also is a part of the discretionary authority or the ability to assess beyond the four corners of the municipal code. Uh, another item that, uh, again, uh, seems to me to have been applied on a rote basis is economic competition, not to be determined because it doesn't say I have to, but also the proximity of these two businesses, the one business being my client's party time, but the second business obviously being uh, BevMo. Certainly the code doesn't say you have to consider the distance or the proximity, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't uh, because to be able to consider those matters, I believe is a part of the director's uh, ability to do so and also uh, perhaps an obligation to do so. The general plan has a lot of elements uh, that go into this process and what I wanted to do with the short time that I have is to go through some of the items that we believe uh, the director did not take into consideration uh, or uh, bypass the consideration or felt that she didn't need to take the consideration. The land use elements purpose is to establish a balanced functional mixture of different types of land use that are consistent with the city's long range goals and values. Policy 6.5 is to develop land use and parking regulations to assure that adequate and reasonable standards are provided. We've heard three offsite shared parking and 20 uh, parking spaces that are allocated for this particular building. But that's not shared parking, it's specifically designated parking, not for a bank, but for a BevMo. <clears throat> so the share parking facilities element seems to me to be pretty paramount in your city's charter. The urban design element purpose is to improve the visual character of major street corridors uh, as the city wants to create a citywide visual linkages and symbols to strengthen <coughs> Dana Point's identity as a city. Well, what is the identity of the city? It is a beach community. Uh, I've seen uh, communications to the city that uh, draws a comparison between Dana Point and, and Laguna Beach. Uh, I actually drove down Laguna Beach on my way down here and I didn't see uh, any of the establishments that I see in Dana Point. So obviously there are members of uh, Dana Point citizenry that uh, want to maintain as close uh, to the beach city pedestrian based community that it is and not to turn it into a commercial complex as cities like Newport Beach, uh, cities like um, Corona Del Mar, all some of the other beach cities have become. Uh, policy 2.2, again, of the urban design elements purpose is to adopt development standards and design guidelines for commercial areas that reflect the individual character of each community. Now, to be frank, <coughs> having viewed the area, um, I think the staff is absolutely correct that you've got old, uh, unused buildings in that location. Uh, it apparently, it used to be... Um, uh, storing uh, boats or, or other you know, uses that uh, have not been in use for I don't know how many years, but you're right, it, it doesn't look very good. The area visually does not look very good. But to jump to the conclusion that this building that was uh, approved for a bank uh, can now be used for a retail outlet of the size of a BevMo, um, not dishing out cash as a bank would, but dishing out alcohol and other products uh, when there are other uh, alcohol purveyors within that uh, area seems to me to be inconsistent with the character of this community. And what I'm hoping for is that others behind me would be able to articulate the character of this community that they would like to see 
and that they would like to see maintained for the city of Dana Point. Goal number three of the urban design elements purpose is to improve the town center as one of the city's primary shopping districts with a small town village atmosphere. Small town village atmosphere. That's what I see in Laguna Beach. What I don't see in a national retail outlet is anything that's even remotely close to the definition of a village. <coughs> the circulation elements purpose, again, all within the um, general plan, is to provide a safe, sensible, and efficient circulation system for the city to provide sufficient off-street parking. The staff has identified three. <coughs> What the um, CDD, we believe, has not done is to, um, they may have, uh, the, the director may have assessed the uh, effects when a bank comes in, but not the effects of when a BevMo comes in. I guess my time is up. Yes, thank you. And uh, I think I get a rebuttal. Yes. Okay, thanks very much. Um, the applicant, who is representing the applicant? Please state your name and city of residence. Uh, Chair O'Connor, my name is Greg Endum. I'm an employee of Beverages and More Bebmo. We're located in Concord, California. When we uh, we heard of the appeal and uh, 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 received the staff report, um, we felt that the staff report really uh, took most of the comments I would have and addressed them. Um, and today when uh, I came down and uh, I went over to see my friends at Ralph's, I went to see my friends at Party Time um, to, to truly again understand their stores, uh, what I found was a lot of misinformation. And I think it's really important as uh, Ms. Luna Reynosa pointed out that, that your decision be based on fact, uh, not conjecture, not uh, allegations, but but true facts. So I just want to address um, some of the things that Mr. Cha pointed out, uh, as well as um, what this use permit is about. It's about the operation and sale of alcohol by BevMo. So we're not looking at the building design. We're not deciding whether that was correct or not correct. That's already been put to bed. We're talking about BevMo. Is the parking meeting the code? Is the conditions of approval sufficient to ensure uh, the city, whatever city concerns there are. To do this, I want to talk a little bit about what we do in our business because it's all about whether we're a good operator and we're going to be responsible alcohol, alcohol retailer. We do a lot of things to separate ourselves from the old-fashioned uh, liquor store definition that sometimes are convenience store that people will bring about. We do that with our product selection. There's a lot of things we refuse to carry. We don't sell cigarettes. We don't sell fortified wines. We don't sell half pints. We don't sell uh, magazines. We don't sell any type of adult, adult literature. Um, we really specialize in wines, spirits, beers, and more craft and imported beers. We have 3,000 wines. People don't come to BevMo to buy their everyday uh, wine that they drink with dinner. Alcohol is sold through multi-channel. People go to Ralph's or whatever their shopping main supermarket is, they buy their groceries, they pick up, whether it's Yellowtail or BV or whatever it is, their everyday wine. They go to Costco if they're gonna have a huge event and they wanna buy in quantity. They come to BevMo for special, ex special occasions. And we've, we've researched this extensively because we want to figure out how to get more business from the supermarkets because they have a lion's share of, of alcohol sales, especially wine. And what we found is it's very difficult for people to make the second stop. Everybody goes to the grocery store a couple times a week. But to have a reason to come to BevMo, you need to be convenient, but you need to offer something that's not offered in the community. And that's what we do. We have 3,000 wines. Our staff people are trained on the different wines, not all 3,000, but they have a, 
Uh, most of the employees that come to us are passionate about the wine business or the spirits business, and so they have a real interest in our products. Um, we do that through selection. We have uh, 1,000 spirits. We have about 900 craft and imported beers. I guarantee that uh, whether it's Ralph's or my friends at Party Time, you're not going to find that selection in their store. They sell a lot of other things that we don't sell. And so when we talk about competition, and that comes clearly through in the uh, appellant's uh, statement on appeal, there's probably over half of the 11 items he cites in one way or another as competition, um, most of which we don't sell. We don't sell food. We don't sell rolling papers. We don't sell lotto, newspapers, bait, tackle, pet food, clean supplies, health and beauty aids. That's not our business. We are the largest retailer of cab fresh caviar in the state of California. We do sell a lot of Rydell glassware. Uh, we do have educational wine tastings once or twice a week where we bring in uh, many times vintners who will host their particular product line. But there's a whole bunch of things that we don't sell. And so this notion that, um, as the young lady who was standing in front of Ralph's today told me, uh, Bebmo's coming to town. They're going to put Ralph's and party time out of business. Well, um, I don't wish that on anybody, but we're not that good. Okay? We're going to fill a niche that right now, uh, there's over a million dollars of, of business, of people that live in the Dana Point zip codes who are driving to our Laguna Niguel store. We know that because we have about 90% of our customers' addresses, zip codes, emails. So every time they shop, we know where they come from, what they buy, how often they buy. And so those people, are what we call it in the retail world, is leakage. They are not finding what they need in town, and they're driving to Laguna, Laguna Niguel, which is not an easy drive. It's not a convenient drive. So that's one of the things we believe we can serve is the folks who are already driving, want our product and driving out of the community. We talked about um, the other things that we do different to be a better responsible retailer. We don't hire anybody under 21. We can, we can hire anybody over 18, but we choose not to. It just reduces the peer pressure element of, of sales to minors. Uh, we have our own in-house um, secret shopper program, Sting pro program, much like the ABC uses, to ensure that every customer that comes in the store is being checked for ID, everyone. And we have an ID checker that is at each register that scans the ID that eliminates any uh, fraudulent or uh, uh, phony identification. We also don't let children in the store. Um, you have to be over 21 or accompanied by a parent or guardian. Even though we have 32 kinds of root beer, um, those are not the people we want to cater to. Uh, the plane commissioner in San Francisco got very upset with me when she said, well, is my child going to be able to come in and buy root beer? And I said, no. I said, we, that's, that's, we draw the line because we want to ensure that the things, there's a slippery slope when you have children in the store, somebody under 21, you can end up with you know, more enticement of sales to minors. My, uh, uh, Mr. Cha also alluded to uh, this issue of the project was proposed with a bank. I was not here. I can let the developer and maybe staff can speak to that. Uh, I know this space was available when I first learned of it. Um, whatever bank may or may not have been interested was not there. And um, we felt with the size of the building, it's about half the size of a store we would normally do, but this is a focus that we've had. We found them very successful. They're much more convenient to shop. Um, I'm categorized in my flyer here from the opposition as a big box for 4,900 square feet. I know Walmart at 180,000 is a big box, but I wasn't ever sure that 5,000 or 4,900 was. But, um, you know, I would like to save whatever couple minutes for later if there's additional questions or uh, maybe some rebuttal, but I'm happy to answer your questions now. Okay, thank you. Um, and can you repeat your name again Gre for me? Greg. Greg, okay. I just want to make sure I've got your speaker slip here. Okay. All right. Uh, well, if we have questions, we'll call you back. <laughs> 
Um, the ap appellant wants a five-minute rebuttal, correct? <coughs> Please state your name again for the um, audio record. <laughs> John Chaw, CHA, for the appellant. Um, commissioners, the, uh, the issue is not necessarily about the quality of the products or the uh, business model that BevMo has. That's, that's, that's really not. I mean, I've been to BevMo. We, I'm sure we've all been to BevMo uh, once or twice a year when we throw a party and we got to get large quantities of stuff. But what I'm here to um, advocate is that, again, not only my clients, but we have submitted to the commission over 1,800 uh, signatures on a petition that opposes the CUP and that urges this commission to deny the application. And uh, I've uh, turned uh, all of those petitions in and made uh, 10 copies uh, for the commission. And I wanted to emphasize that the support um, in opposition uh, is, to me, overwhelming. And within a very short period of time, we were able to obtain over 1,800 um, signatures in opposition. So I'd like to um, request that uh, those petitions, uh, copies of which have been provided, be made a part of this record. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we, we will begin with uh, our speakers, um, and this is a three-minute time limit, uh, Pat Patterson followed by Gail Benda. Uh, good evening, uh, Madam uh, Chairwoman and fellow council, or commissioners. Uh, my name is Pat Patterson. I'm the uh, developer representing the Ware family. And uh, I just, obviously I'm here in support of the project. Um, uh, I just wanted to say a couple things. Um, one, obviously we're very excited to uh, uh, develop a new building along Coast Highway. Uh, we've, uh, like staff had mentioned, uh, we spent a long time uh, getting to that uh, building approval and we're very happy with the design and look and think it would be a great uh, asset in addition to uh, Coast Highway and the city of Dana Point. Um, the second thing I wanted to say was, um, uh, in a response to Mr. Cha, and uh, growing up in coastal Orange County and being in the real estate business, um, I've done, uh, driven up and down Coast Highway from Sunset Beach to San Clemente for years and years. And uh, uh, it's evident in, in, in all, all different small towns that an eclectic mix of tenants is, is generally good for everybody. Um, and we've seen that uh, time and time again, both here and in other places. And I think BevMo, with its business and what it does and, and its dedication to its business, I think will, will be a great uh, tenant for people and, and people will go there, uh, as Greg mentioned. Uh, the second thing, uh, uh, when Kelly Ware approached me to work with him on this project, um, he, he mentioned to me that this property has been in the family for uh, close to 70 years and that his goal and desire was to uh, develop the property and it was all about, you know, little people um, and, and keep it in the family for decades to come. And I work with a lot of different people, as you can imagine, in my business and I couldn't ask for a better guy or family to work with than him. So that's it. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Thank you. Gail Benda, followed by Penny Maynard. Please state your name and city of residence. Hi, I'm Gail Benda. I'm a resident of Dana Point, have been for more than 10 years. I urge you to please grant the appeal of the Community Development Director's action and disallow this conditional use permit, or CUP, that would make it make it possible for a BevMo to be built on this property. This, requ this request is not a request to disallow liquor stores from coming to other areas of Dana Point, but it is a request to reconsider the location of this particular business. The proposed location of this particular property is one of the first areas of business that someone coming into Dana Point will see. 
While there are other businesses one can see before coming up the hill, the highlighting of the start of town center with that big sign has made this property most noteworthy. This is a major component of the major view corridor into Dana Point from the south. This view corridor is one of the ways visitors to our lovely city will judge our city. As they, whoever they are, say, you can only make one first impression. And our major view corridors serve as our way, Dana Point's way, of making a first impression. The location of this property is one of the places Dana Point makes a first impression. Dana Point is spending millions of dollars to beautify and redevelop both Del Prado and PCH and all of Town Center with new traffic patterns, sidewalks, mature palm trees, etc. So why would we want to highlight a discount liquor store as one of the main attractions of Dana Point? There are other locations where Bev a BevMo could be built that are easily accessed, but that wouldn't affect our small town atmosphere and our wonderfully locally owned businesses in town center. Perhaps down near Doheny, Doheny Village, for instance. I certainly don't have a problem with having alcohol sold in various stores, restaurant, pubs, etc. around town. I just don't believe that one of the first things visitors to Dana Point should see in such a prominent spot is a fairly large flashy chain store known for selling alcohol. That would tell visitors that alcohol and chain stores are what we most care about and what we want everyone to know and remember about us. Most of us in Dana Point do not want that to be the impression given to visitors to our wonderful city. Please grant the appeal that is before you tonight and disallow the, the CUP. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bendit. <laughs> um, order. I have a no clapping, no booing policy. <laughs> um, it expedites the process, but I also want you all to remember that this is a business meeting. This isn't a theater. <laughs> so no clapping, no booing. Ms. Uh, my Maynard. Name, my name is Penny Maynard, and I am an almost 20-year resident of Dana Point. And I'm here in support of BevMo. I think that what the city has done and what they've negotiated and the conditional use permit and all the different aspects of it will ensure that it is an attractive property. I know the city, I know the city government, and I have complete faith that they will not have some flashy chain big box. And it's silly when you hear 5,000 as opposed to the size of Walmart and you can't call them both big box. And that is my opinion and uh, I hope that uh, BevMo is built. We need people to come downtown. This is a draw, and it will help all the other businesses and retail that the city hopes to attract from the area. I have been watching and listening for almost 20 years at various stages of this town center revitalization. And um, I just am so happy to see what is happening and you need to bring people in. We're going to have Marblehead in San Clemente that's going to draw so many people. We need things to draw people to Dana Point Town Center. So that's all I have to say, and I hope uh, you support it. Thank you, Ms. Maynard. Uh, Mary Hartman, followed by Wayne Rayfield. Good evening, Chairwoman, Commissioners, um, City staff, and the people of Dana Point. Um, my name is Mary Hartman. I own two properties here in Dana Point and a business on the north end of town. Um, I'm here tonight to um, let you know that I completely oppose BevMo. I think it's sneaky how we find out that this is coming into town when we heard it was going to be a bank. Um, I think that change is great, and I'm really excited about the changes and for the new town center. It's long overdue. This place is a diamond. That's why there's four major hotels here. It attracts people. The people in this community love it. But let's remember our roots in the history of this town. It's been here since the 1920s as a quaint, sweet seaside village. And the last thing we want is a big box, um, BevMo, at the gateway to our south end of town. 
Um, and 5,000 square feet sounds pretty big to me, considering my store is 750. Um, I just feel like we need to preserve the small town vibe. I know it's been approved, the building's beautiful, it's gorgeous, but we don't want a BevMo. We don't want, we want a boutique -y vibe. It's bad enough we have Starbucks, uh, no offense, they make great lattes, but let's stick to, um, you know, the, the mom pa vibe that we have going here. I just, honestly, I think it's just gross that we would even entertain the thought of a BevMo in this beautiful little seaside village that will definitely squish party time liquor. And by the way, if you want great wine and, and amazing sandwiches and cheese, go to Monarch Beach Market. It's right there, and it's part of our community, and we need to support the smalls because we were here, and you know what? We're on the front lines right now. This town is torn apart, and we're hanging in there, and we're staying positive and joyful during this really hard time, and we, we need the, the support from you guys as well in, in that venue, and that's all I got to say. Oh, time's up. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is Wayne Rayfield, who's not a stranger to this venue, and uh, followed by Stephen Carpenter. Good evening, Madam Chair, Commissioners. My name is Wayne Rayfield, and I am a long-term resident of Paradise. And I hold our city staff in the highest regard. Unfortunately, Tonight, I must respectfully and adamantly disagree with their action. And I would call on the Planning Commission to overturn the director's decision to approve a minor CUP for BevMo. A little history. As you may know, I was chairman of the Town Center Committee back in 2005 and six. That committee was composed of 15 residents and business owners. We held 30 meetings, formal meetings, and a lot more informal one-on-one -on -one meetings. We also had 300 or thereabouts pieces of press that were published. The whole process that took more than a year was open and transparent. We had many points of view expressed. We had a lot of ideas expressed. And we made many compromises and adjustments in what our initial thoughts were. And the whole process culminated in the town center plan, which ultimately some 85% of our community endorsed given a survey. And they also made ideas, uh, suggested businesses. We need a bakery. We, we need an improv theater. We need a bookstore. We need this and that. No one ever suggested we need a mega retailer of liquor, I might add. BevMo is simply inconsistent with the plan that the city council adopted in 2006. The major goal of that plan was to create a vibrant, pedestrian-oriented town center. You've heard BevMo describe. People drive to BevMo, they get the specialty liquor they want, and they drive off. What's pedestrian-friendly about that? Nothing. The subcommittee discussed and agreed on 10 principles for town center, which were also adopted by the city council and committed to. Number one was keep the family-oriented beach character of Dana Point. Does BevMo do that? Absolutely not. Also, create a distinct character and identity. BevMo doesn't do that. Please ask yourselves, is BevMo consistent with the commitment the city made to our residents? And when you ask yourself that, you must conclude 
No, it is not. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rayfield. Uh, Stephen Carpenter, followed by Michael Sprague, or Sprague. Good evening, Madam Chair, Commissioners, and staff. My name is Stephen Carpenter. I'm a resident in Capistrano Beach since 1959, which probably passes most of everybody in here, even some of you in your age. Um, I'm here tonight regarding what the staff report is coming up with. As the city states, pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, the project is found to be categorically exempt per section 1532, uh, 15.332. If you look up that section and what was originally approved, the section states in there, if any of the following actions in the number one item, D, approve, approval of the project would not result in a significant effect relating to traffic, noise, air quality, or water quality. I owned a liquor store which is gonna be, which is roughly one quarter the size of what Bevmo is. You're going to have semi-tractor trailer trucks. You're going to have your Anheuser-Busch trucks, which run around 45 feet, semi-tractor trailer trucks that are going to be pulling into there. There's no real designated loading zone because the size of the property doesn't require it per municipal code. But the parking code is requiring 17 units plus one handicapped spot. They're saying there's going to be 20 on the location. What are you going to do with a 65-foot semi-tractor trailer trying to pull in there and turn around and make a U-turn? Where are the employees going to be parking? And if you're going to consider on-street parking, how many cars then are going to be jeopardized when you have a tractor trailer or delivery truck and the constant flow of delivery trucks that are going to be coming in and out of that seven days a week? How is that going to work with traffic flow? It's going to substantially cause a problem at the main intersection, which is going to be the main entrance to the southern main entrance of the town center. I urge you, do not approve the CDP. This should go through a complete new process to apply for a cup for the type of business that was approved for. It was approved as an office building or a bank, not to be a retail store that was going to impose a huge traffic burden on that southern entrance. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Sprague, or Sprague, you can correct me when you get up here, and uh, followed by Kirsten Reynolds. Uh, hello, how you doing? Uh, my name is Michael Sprague, for those who don't know me. Um, I'm a resident of Dana Point, California. Um, I was born here. I grew up here. I went to all the schools here. And I'm also a U.S. Army veteran. And I've been shopping at Party Time Liquor since I was 16 years old. <laughs> um, <laughs> I uh, uh, admit that on the record. <laughs> I, when I was 16 years old, I was actually um, arrested in the parking lot of Party Time Liquor <laughs> for, uh, for being a minor in possession of alcohol. And I've been shopping there ever since. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to make a joke of this, but when I look at the city I live in and how when you drive into Dana Point, it's just like you have Hennessy's and you have Stillwater and you have Ralph's, you have Circle K, Party Time. You have all these businesses that can sell you alcohol. You have a thousand restaurants that can sell you alcohol. I mean, that's what this city's kind of becoming. It's a great place to come hang out and drink alcohol. And um, I mean, what is what we need when you drive into Dana Point is another liquor store that says, welcome to Dana Point, come get some booze and drive back to your house and have another party. I mean, I don't know. That's just the, the city I see is changing a lot, it's being developed. Um, you know, if I had my way, um, I would, uh, I'd like to have no harbor there. I wish it was still Killer Dana. <laughs> you know, I wish it was just a, just a beach with no boats and pollution, but it isn't. It's all been developed, somebody owns everything, and they just wanna sell you more alcohol and more products. And that's, that's all they want to do. They just want to make money off of everybody else. Plain and simple. And that's all I got. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sprague. Uh, Kirsten Reynolds, followed by Kathy Barnum. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. Kirsten Reynolds, Dana Point resident, homeowner, and Town Center subcommittee member. 
As a member of the Town Center Subcommittee, I would like to remind the Planning Commissioners and the City Staff that the Town Center Lantern District Plan approved under our, excuse me, our United Charge cites items of priority numerous times throughout the plan. Tonight, I would like to bring to your attention the plan's focus on creating a sense of place. The Town Center Plan begins by stating that the successful Town Centers provide a strong sense of place and play a significant role in the image and identity of the community. It also states that strong town centers build on the local natural, historic, and cultural qualities of a community, thus establishing a distinctive sense of place. The priority for sense of place is mentioned throughout the document, but I would like to mention just one policy. Policy 2.16, give priority or incentives to businesses that reflect unique merchandise and architecture and promote the sense of character and identity. The Department of Commerce has written an article on sense of place and states the following. One definition of sense of place is that a place comes into existence when humans give meaning to a part of the larger, undifferentiated space. Anytime a location is identified or given a name, it is separated from the undefined space that surrounds it. Some places, however, have been given stronger meanings names or definitions by society than others. Places said to have a strong sense of place have a strong identity and character that is deeply felt by local inhabitants and by many visitors. This article goes on to state that places that lack a sense of place are sometimes referred to as placeless or inauthentic. These landscapes are those that have no special relationship to the places in which they are located. They could be anywhere roadside strip shopping malls, gas stations, and convenience stores. Fast food chain restaurants and chain department stores are often cited as examples of placeless landscape elements. Often chain stores use a standardized, standardized architectural style in multiple communities, leaving people with a somewhat homogenous feeling with no real distinction between communities. I believe it is safe to say that a chain liquor store is not what we had envisioned for a gateway use as one enters the town center couplet, nor does it create a sense of place in our community. Please take into account the town center subcommittees and city staff's review of these critical elements of successful town centers and support the adopted town center plans policy in regards to these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reynolds. We have Kathy Barnum followed by Alice Anderson. Good evening, Madam Chair, Planning Commissioners. My name is Kathy Barnum. I have a PR firm, and I'm currently in Mich living in Mission Viejo. I'd like to take a moment and thank outgoing Chairwoman Liz Claus for her many years of service and leadership. She's been a model Planning Commissioner and a friend to all of us. She will be missed as part of the Planning Commission team. This evening, I'm primarily here to uh, share with some of the commissioners that are new some of the tasks I was responsible for back in 2005 when Roma Design Group and other consultants toured what is today becoming our downtown Dana Point. And in May 2005 wrote, The Issues and Opportunities for a Successful Town Center. I was hired to coordinate the public outreach for the writing of the final proposed town center plan. That meant my job was to help staff write, produce, and disseminate multiple types of communications, some of which included communication information packets to the 15 member subcommittee, printed fact sheets, maps, banners, um, around town inviting people to meetings, press releases, newsletters, shopping guides, presentations to club and organizations, to name a few. Right, Mr. Tilton? <laughs> and Bobby, where's Bobby? If I could not have done it without these two people, and several others, I should say. The reason I bring up all of this is that I've heard it mentioned that the town center plan is too out of date, too old, and I want to have it on the record that hundreds of people participated in this outreach campaign that lasted over a year, always with the intention that this process was and would become a long-term living planning document, that it would probably take seven to 10 years before implementation. It was written like that. It's really not too old of a plan. Tonight, you're looking at an appeal for a warehouse liquor store where people will come in, buy liquor, and leave. No one will be walking up to town center with 
booze in their hands. I ask you tonight, please improve your communications to the residents, the existing businesses, and the people of Dana Point. I saw no real outreach on this project from day one, other than what was demanded by code. The Copper Lantern Gateway, okay, that's what it is, south end of town. It's something you want to look back 20 years from now and say, my job as a planning commissioner allowed me to review new businesses coming into town to ensure they contributed to the vibrant environment desired back in 2005 for the Dana Point Town Center we all enjoy today. And guess what? You'll want to feel proud of yourself, and that is not going to happen if you drive off the freeway coming into town, the first thing you see is a BevMo. We're all here to help you, to support you. You have unlimited resources in this town, in this community, with, from, from the public. Most of the subcommittee live here and we'll sit down and discuss anything relating to the long-term planning of this town. Please use us. Thank you. Thank you. Ellis Anderson, followed by uh, Ryan Ruland. Oops. Good evening, Madam Chairman and Commissioners. I'm Alice Anderson and I've been a resident of Dana Point since 1990. I was also a member of the Town Center Subcommittee. Now, the members were very committed as to how we envisioned the development of the Town Center and its businesses. And right after the committee was finished, the city built a fine, a great bridge over Pacific Coast Highway that serves as the entrance to Dana Point. The purpose of the bridge, of course, was several but one was the welcoming image to our city. Now a second entrance, of course, is at the Y, the couplet you're speaking of tonight that you have to make a decision on. And recently, right before that split, we've put up a new sign, right? A new town center or lantern district sign. And it's true, all the residents, we want to see progress and new businesses in the lantern district. And now you need to make a decision as what to do going forward. I'm not against the city having a large liquor store, but I do think that it is not the right location for this store. Maybe too chaotic, I don't know. So another establishment for that location would be better. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Uh, Ryan Ruland, followed by Glenn Ormseth. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, City Commissioners. My name is Ryan Ruland, and I'm an 11-year resident of Dana Point, and I've lived in Orange County for 40 years, and I've also owned eight different properties in Dana Point. I also sit on the board of directors at Lander Bay Villas, which is the large community directly across the street from the proposed site. My unit actually faces what we're talking about tonight. There's 112 units in our community, we average about a million dollars per property, and most of the residents, if not all, this will negatively affect. I want to congratulate you on your development to date, but I'm opposed to the BEVMO, as Mr. Rayfield, an esteemed member of our community, uh, so well uh, spoke about. I just think it's ridiculous to have a discount liquor store at the entrance to our city center. Um, do we really need a company at our main entrance whose motto per the website is shopping for beverages should be as much as fun as drinking them? And do we need a, 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 a liquor store who sells five cents bottles of wines? We really need to keep our town center, a small town beach vibe and support local and small businesses, not a national chain. I mean, I really feel passionate about this. I, I, I wanna say, come on, we can do better than this. Uh, let's do the right thing for Dana Point. Let's make this a classy beach town. We're so undervalued at this point. Uh, San Clemente is doing such a better job than we're doing. Laguna Beach is so much higher than we're, what we're doing. You would not see a BevMo approved in, in Laguna Beach. Really, enough is enough. So let's put an end to this. Thank you. Glenn Ormseth, followed by Lynn Smith. Good evening. 
Uh, my name is Glenn Ormseth, and I'm the president of uh, the Homeowners Association at Lantern Bay Villas, which, uh, for those that don't know, is directly across the street from this site. Uh, by the way, I want to say hello to Evan, who I've talked to on the phone, uh, and for John for returning my call. Thank you very much. Uh, so in three minutes, and less than that now, uh, I want to... Uh, try to summarize what I think we've heard tonight already and what's at issue, frankly, for our villas. 112 units. Um, we, uh, we believe we have an impact in the city and we believe we matter with respect to what's across our street. Now, the issue is not so much a business decision tonight, whether it be a BevMo there or conflicting with another liquor store, the business decisions are separate from what I'd like to address. What I'd like to address is <clears throat> the question of not the legality of can you do this? You know, legally, apparently, you can. The question is, should you do it? Should you do it? Now, to that end, as many of you know, some don't, about half a block to the west of this location is the recycling center. And this recycling center, already heavy traffic, large trucks, and by the way, that recycling center is right in back of Ralph's. So there's already large semi-trucks every day come in and out of there. What also is there is a, a population of, we will call, homeless and or addicted people. Now, I know that everyone in this room, uh, no one is against doing what we can to help the homeless and to help drug-addicted individuals. We see it every day, all day, near that recycling center, all the time. If we want to have our city, as was spoken earlier tonight several times, regarding the friendliness and the residential village quality of our city, it seems to us that putting a tenant, a BevMo, that's, that serves liquor, just aids and abets what can happen. Recycling center, get your money, go down the street, go into BevMo. We are facilitating something that I don't think any of us want to do. So it's pretty obvious, I think, that uh, the villas, at least, across the street, would rather have another tenant in this building, which I understand has already been approved, than uh, the Bevlam. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ormseth. Uh, Lynn Smith, followed by, mm, it looks like Michael Mento, but I can't read your writing. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my name is Lynn Smith. I moved down here from Fullerton when I graduated from college in 1971, and I've been a homeowner ever since, so that's like 40-something years. Um, I started writing before I heard everybody speak, and um, what I decided to cue in on was kind of what everybody is saying. Um, this is all about effects. It's um, the atmosphere. It's almost an intangible thing but all these people have said something that tries to describe this intangible quality that our city has, that you can't get back once it's gone. It's, it's very um, ethereal in a way. So, um, but I think even the gentleman that talked about party time, that was a good point about alcohol and the, its effects. I grew up in Fullerton, and that's a very vibrant street now, Harbor Boulevard, and if you read anything about Fullerton, there's all kinds of police stuff now because of all the bars and all the restaurants and all the alcohol. 
and um, the effects on the community atmosphere, like I said. And I believe it's your responsibility to tap into this intangible quality that people really love and why we're here that sometimes we can't describe. Um, so um, we all try to verbalize it and hope that you have an understanding of that. Um, so we all say it in different ways, um, but um, going in the big box direction, I'm not sure. Um, friends of ours tried to see if they could put a mom and pop in that huge nightmare called the Outlet Mall in San Clemente, and they wouldn't take a mom and pop. They would not. So San Clemente is going to have to live with what that mall is going to bring to them and all those big box stores. So maybe BevMo should go just down the way a little bit. Do you really need, you know, I don't like to talk about tax dollars that we need in, in, in negate what the community wants or, f or the feeling that we want. Um, so um, I just think that San Clemente has to live with something they've chosen to do, and I don't know the effects of money, monetary might be huge, but the effects on the community, you can already see it. It looms huge over the freeway. So um, that's my take on uh, kind of what everybody was trying to say. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Michael. Minton. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Minton. Uh, I appreciate the chance to speak. I've only lived here for about three years, just in time to see this start to take off, um, the whole planning commissions and the results of the reconstruction. So I laud you for your efforts in this so far. I've been waiting to see how it works out. Um, what I've heard here tonight is that we had very short notice, whatever reasons, uh, but 1,800 people, was it 1,800 people on what, a couple weeks notice at most signed petitions, you know, opposed to this? There must be a reason for that. Uh, if the uh, commission is responsible for, you know, the public opinion or representing it, I think that speaks very, very loudly uh, for the multitude of reasons that you've heard here tonight. But I will add one more, and that is um, at, I live two, three houses up on Malaga from party time. So I'm pretty close to where this place is going to be. It's also uh, my pedestrian route if I'm going over, walk over to the Ralph's and grab something to eat. Um, so I walk down there right by that Y intersection, which, as you know, has changed with the new pat traffic patterns. Well, it was dangerous before to walk through there because it's, it's a bad spot for a pedestrian, for one. It used to be uh, pretty bad. Now it's horrible. Uh, if you're going to walk you know, across that street, you better be moving pretty quick. And I'd hate to be drunk, and I'd hate to be wearing black, you know, and trying to do it because I've got two opposing pieces of traffic coming in the same direction, different directions over the top of a hill moving about 50 mile an hour. So that's going to cause a problem. If you're going to have an increased traffic pattern there uh, with cars, and I don't know where the entrance to that parking lot's going to be, but if it's on PCH, you're going to have people headed up the hill, crossing over the double lines in front of opposing traffic moving at 50. You're going to have a problem. You know, that's going to be a major, major problem in that direction, not to mention the pedestrian traffic. And that will increase too, let's face it. So um, I think the, the other strongest thing I heard here is that this is a cultural issue. You know, when we cross and come up that hill into this beautiful town, and I, really, I like that sound, or the sign that's up there, this Dana Point, it's nice. Right behind it, Bevmo. I don't think so. It doesn't quite fit, you know. So uh, to try to present uh, Bevmo as a you know, high-end uh, purveyor of high-end liquors is a bit disingenuous in my opinion. but. You know, business is what it is, so I appreciate their, their attempts between the developer and BevMo to push this through. Peace. But not here and not there. You know, it's a bad position. It's a bad cultural uh, image for the, for the city, uh, and it certainly is something that will cause some serious problems traffic-wise, in my opinion. Not to mention, nobody wants it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that is all for our speakers, but I would like to um, ask some questions of Mr. Endum. Uh, Mr. Bevmo? <laughs> um, yes, ma'am. Well, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out how, what classifies a big box store and how do you plan on putting that into only 4,900 square feet? But to me, 4,900 square feet isn't that much when you're you know, thinking of like the store in Laguna Niguel, per se. Maybe you can draw some comparisons or contrasts to explain that. It, are you going to be different than Laguna Niguel or? Well, let me go back. The company is 21 years old this year. 
When we started, we were founded by the purchase of five liquor barn stores, which was a chain that Safeway started in Northern California to use up their 20,000 square foot excess real estate because they had graduated to 30,000 square foot supermarkets. So they formed a chain, I don't know how long ago, probably in the 70s, um, and started 20,000 square foot liquor stores in effect. Our founders came along and bought five of these in 1994. Over the years, we have learned through you know, experience, through curating the assortment, through personal taste of our customers. You don't need to do it in 20,000 square feet. Uh, about eight years ago, the, the, the box size that we were looking for, I wasn't with the company then, but just looking at our portfolio, was about 10,000 square feet, nine to 10. In the last 10 years, the company has tried some different models to make it smaller. And we did a couple that we took 10,000 square feet worth of stuff and put it in a 5,000 square foot box. And one worked and one didn't. And so in the last couple of years, we wanted to look and see, can we do a better job at serving the neighborhoods? We don't want to be a regional, we don't want to go to a regional mall. That's not where people shop for their alcohol. They shop neighborhood or community. And so we built a store most recently in Marina del Rey. It's 4,400 square feet. And what we learned there, which is different than a typical BevMo, is first of all, don't try to put 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag. Don't have all tall shelves so that you walk down dark aisles because the products are so high you can't even see the top. Go and understand what the community wants and put that in there. But if they're not buying box wine, don't put a four foot display of box wine in the store if that's not what the customer wants. So we've assorted the store much differently and with a much more critical eye. We've changed the fixtures and the layout much more differently. And it's been, a, it's been a huge success for that community. And we're going back now and retooling some of the other smaller stores that we didn't do correctly um, 10 years ago to adapt some of those elements. So is it gonna look like a typical BevMo? I don't think, uh, we feel it doesn't. We feel we, with the lower shelves, with the way merchandise is displayed, in this particular case, you have a large rotunda uh, at the back, which is open on the inside, which we were going to incorporate with things like a fire pit or wine tasting to really have a nice ambiance there uh, during the summer. Um, these are elements that we've found our customers embrace. And um, so I, I don't think you're going to see it, 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 it. If you were to go to the Marina Del Rey store, you would get a feel for the types of things we're doing. But that was just the tip of the iceberg for us. We've hired an interior designer and, is, and are trying to put some elements. They're fun and exciting. As the gentleman said, shopping for alcohol should be as fun as drinking it, and we believe that. We don't believe it should be in a grungy location where you're battling with a lot of other products that are unrelated, and you know, you're ashamed to take your kids there. So Marina Del Rey is the, do you have any other stores that are within the 5,000 square feet? Yes, we have uh, one in San Jose. We have one in Solana Beach. That was, those were the initial stores that we're retooling now. Um, we have a store in La Jolla that's not five, it's a little larger than five. Um, and then we have about five of these on the drawing board. So this is a new business model? Well, no, it's, it's a refinement of an old business model that we spent more time on. Okay. Do the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Endem? No? All right, thank, thank you. you. With that, I will close the public hearing and uh, bring it back to the commissioners for a discussion, deliberation. Anybody would like to start? Uh, Chairwoman, <coughs> excuse me, Chairwoman O'Connor, I do have a couple questions for okay. staff, if you don't mind. Vice Chair. Um, Evan, can you help me out with a couple things here? Uh, first question that I have for you is related to traffic. So when you look to the traffic for this use, is it 
could, is there a, a code? So I know the IT manual has code specific for individual uses. Does liquor have its own code or does it fall into the retail category, the convenience store category? And when you compared that with what was it, <coughs> excuse me, approved, was there any difference? If, if I can go ahead and take that question. Um, what we did relative to environmental analysis and, and traffic as part of that is uh, there's a categorical exemption. Uh, it's a class 32 infill exemption and it asks you to look at, uh, there's a few different criteria that you have to meet and, and traffic being one of them. Um, the town center plan when it was adopted, a mitigated negative declaration was um, approved as, as part of that adoption of that plan. Um, then subsequently when the city moved forward with a streetscape improvement project, a project level EIR was done, uh, but essentially that streetscape project was looking at the entire town center development, re uh, configuring traffic patterns. So it had to look at traffic under the build out scenario of the town center plan as did the MND. Um, so there was a total of um, uh, 237 residential units analyzed, additional residential units, 81,224 square feet of office space, 192,165 square feet of retail restaurant uses within the town center plan. And um, CEQA establishes thresholds. And so until these thresholds are met, um, there are no significant impacts for traffic, noise, air quality, any of the other issues that are analyzed in an um, environmental review process. And this project coming online does not trigger that threshold. So staff was able to, with, in consultation with our um, traffic consulting firm, third-party traffic consultant, conclude that there would be no traffic impacts that were not previously analyzed under those other two documents, and therefore there were no traffic impacts or any of those other impacts. So it was uh, exempted. Further, and that analysis was done when the initial building was brought forward. I've heard people talking about the differences between a bank use and a and a you know liquor store. Um, first, I would like to clarify for the record that even when the initial staff report was brought forward, and in fact, if you look at the elevations, you'll see bank and shop on there. there. The developer was clear that they were in negotiations with various tenants, but they hadn't landed one yet, and that they were wanting to keep their options op open. It was never clear whether a bank would potentially occupy the entire floor plate, whether there would be two different tenants in there, um, and the developer applicant wanted to keep options open because it was a spec building and there was not a tenant yet selected. But in discussions with our CEQA attorney, there is case law and, and specifically, um, you know, not the exact same facts here, but actually in some ways um, worse facts for another case where there was speculative development and it ended up being a Walmart that was coming in. And folks were very concerned about the environmental impacts of the Walmart and the court ruled that it would be ludicrous and ridiculous for a developer to be able to have signed lease agreements with every single tenant before they move a project forward in an environmental review process. And in fact, it didn't matter who the end tenant was, um, that the fact that it was Walmart that was coming through, the fact that a retail use had been analyzed was sufficient. And so, um, I, sort of a long-winded answer, but we did analyze these various uses um, and we feel comfortable and confident that the exemption is accurate and, and actually that there is no new information, no new environmental effects um, from moving a BevMo forward. And in fact, there's another CEQA section that says you don't need to do any further environmental review in that circumstance. And that court case held up that um, analysis and decision. And then I was <clears throat> reading in the conditions, I assume the applicant or the uh, has, uh, is okay with them, that there's some provisions about single serve uh, alcohol. Are there any other provisions in any of the other stores located in the town center that have restrictions on how and what they can sell? I'm personally not aware. Um, some of our businesses have conditional use permits and they may have conditions therein that would speak to that. Some others may not, depending on their age, and others may not have CUPs at all, again, depending on their, their age. Um, but personally, I'm not aware. I'm not, do you have any experience? No, and I'm not aware of any other than, say, a, a coffee shop uh, maybe was approved as a coffee shop, and therefore, if they wanted to serve alcohol, so to speak, then they would have to come back to the city to get an approval for that. Um, if they wanted to expand their menus to where they became a full-service restaurant, 
that wouldn't be allowed under their current conditions of approval. They'd have to come back. That's about the only example I could think of. Okay, thank you. I think the, um, yeah, that covers it. Thank you. Evan, um, do you have the rendering uh, C2.0 that you could put up on the um, overhead? I just wanted to clarify something. Uh, when we approved, when the Planning Commission approved the building, Oh. Okay. C two point zero. Um it um it's not that one. Yeah, it it, it could be that one. This well that says site plan. Anyway, what I wanted to show was on one of these it could be um, this one. It said, I, I, in, two, in 2014, I never expected this to be a bank, ever, because it says on the plans, future eight feet by 12 feet uh, grease interceptor. I always figured it was gonna be a restaurant. <laughs> I never thought it was gonna be a bank. Um, so I am, I, I'm surprised it's, uh, you know, it, it's, being brought forward with this use, but I just wanted to, for the public to realize that if they were wondering if the Planning Commission thought it was going to be a bank, um, I, that was never, our th at least as a commissioner, my thought at the time. So anyway, a any other um, questions for staff? Commissioner Murphy? I don't know if this is a question or just sort of my Either way. <laughs> <laughs> Musing. Uh, it's easy for me to look at this in a very narrow, and take a very narrow view of what the issues, am I not on? Um, you need to speak closer so that people can Okay. Uh, to me, the, the issues are, are narrow in the way it's been constructed, and I've looked at all you know the the documents, and I've 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 looked at um, over time. I've given a great lot of thought and to what really is the issue here, at least the way it's written. And I see the issues being involving um, simply does it fit the city's general plan. Um, does the outlet, um, not only fit the town center plan and the Dana Point zoning cord, code, but also the general plan? Because isn't, I get the feeling that's what we're talking about. And, and, and so far, I can't see where it, is in violation of those plans as the way they're written now. Um, and, and having heard everybody speak, believe me, I I understand what I understand the heart and I understand the concerns. But really, I think what we're looking at is the legal issues here. in terms of it has been established that this plan fits all of, it fits these, these codes. It fits the Dana Point zoning code. It fits the town center plan. It fits the general plan. Uh, and in, in my opinion, just my opinion, the, some of the issues that were discussed tonight are not within the purview of the Dana Point Zoning Code and, and not within the purview of this discussion. So I, can you tell me, uh, give us a little more information about how this plan has come to, to be 
you know, we put the plan here and then we look at the zoning codes and, and how does that all figure in? Certainly. So the, the town center plan is actually part of the zoning code and it's, it's an appendix to the zoning code. So it's essentially part of the Dana Point zoning code. And in order for it to be approved, a finding of it being consistent with the city's general plan ha had to have been made. So um, it, it, it was approved, that has never been challenged and um, I'm not aware of it not being consistent with the city's general plan. Um, one thing that I think is confusing perhaps uh, to, to the public are there sometimes are, are goal and policy statements in the town center plan that use words like, you know, should and encourage and what the city staff has to look at are actually the, the development standards and you would, you know, assume that the development standards would be consistent with those goals and policy statements and but there was a land use matrix that was um, approved as part of the town center plan that this land use matrix has uses that are allowed by right, meaning that if somebody were to come forward and propose one of those uses, it would not come before this body at all. It would not be a discretionary decision making process. They would just come and pull, pull building permits. There are conditionally allowed uses where they have, um, you, the, the city can use some discretion and, and put some conditions of approval. Um, in this case, it was the serving of alcohol and, and staff did look at that closely to ensure that there would be no negative impacts from the serving of alcohol and provided some conditions. And in fact, we provided a couple of other conditions that go beyond that scope a bit, frankly. Um, and finally, there are prohibited uses. And the town center plan never said national retailers shall be prohibited uses. It didn't say anything over so many square feet shall be a prohibited use. And so in terms of does it comply with the code, uh, the answer is, is yes. Uh, Commissioner Claus? Um, I, am, I am not convinced that um, a BevMo is um, devil incarnate. Um, I, I'm not convinced that it is something that is going to be uh, terrible for the city. At the same time, I think that we probably have uh, other issues before us that are more compelling, and that is the uh, ramping up the Lantern District. And my understanding on this BevMo was that that uh, uh, we believe that that could be a way for it to kind of, you know, jumpstart the Lantern District. Um, we have had a number of developers come and go. Uh, we have a couple of restaurants that seem to be ramping up. Um, certainly when uh, they were looking at, at uh, the harbor, uh, we got lucky and a couple of uh, really good restaurateurs came in and were able to jumpstart that in the harbor. And I think what we really need is something that jumpstarts this. Um, if we get the right arrangement, it well may be that we would want a BevMo um, or not. Um, I, I quite frankly would like to see us kind of take, take a good look at some of these developers. A lot of them have moved on, uh, or just ran away, but there's, there's some that I believe are out there. And I think that if we can get, um, get some them to actually start putting, as we would, as Ursula and I were talking about, um, shovels in the ground, that it would then become easier, much easier for us to decide whether something like a BevMo would be uh, appropriate um, or something else might come along. Um, I'm open to suggestions. Vice Chair? Sure. So, <coughs> I, you know, I'm not in favor of approving in the appeal. I'm in favor of supporting the um, the CUP as approved by staff. I think it's really important that as a commission, we're careful and thoughtful with what we do. Um, at the same time, recognize that just because 
uh, a lot of people don't want something doesn't necessar necessarily mean it's a bad thing. And I, I have a few comments because I live nearby this store. I was approached by somebody with a petition. And when I asked a couple pretty standard questions that anybody who signed that petition should have asked, I couldn't get answers. And so when I look at that petition, and, um, and I'm sure it took a lot of time for you to gather 1,800 signatures, I question how much information was given to the people that signed that petition and how many of those people asked questions that they couldn't get answers to because I couldn't get any answers. And I didn't know it was coming before the commission at the time that petition showed up at my front door. And so um, what's really, what, what appears to be the issue here, frankly, is that you've got a business that has competition coming into town. And that's not for this commission to decide on. We don't get to sit up in here and determine whether a chain store is appropriate over a mom and pop. What I know is I live in Dana Point because of a chain store, because my family, one of my family members works for a chain store and they provide the income for us to live here. I also know that every chain store starts as a mom and pop. And so for us to sit up here and judge the chain store um, as a planning commission is, it, frankly, anywhere that I've looked in the zoning ordinance and the general plan, I can't find it. And so I'm not inclined to, to grab onto this idea that BevMo is, you know, the devil. I just, I don't see it. So um, I think our scope is limited to the uh, CUP only, and uh, I'm in support. I also believe that that building will be a great building, and whoever's in there, as long as it's an allowed use, uh, will do well, and that building will suit this community well. It's, it's not necessarily just the retailer that's inside the building, but also the building itself. I know that I saw drawings floating around the community with 30-foot signs. My understanding is there are no signs approved under this project? Correct. A sign program would come before this commission in the future if it's approved. And so, you know, for those reasons, I, I would not support the appeal. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, you know, I've, I've struggled over this, um, this decision. Uh, somebody had mentioned, why do we want to see ourselves as a city? And they pointed out Laguna Beach. Well, my husband was born and raised in Laguna, and he would not want us to become <laughs> Laguna Beach because it went from, you know, mom and pop hardware stores and, and uh, liquor stores and, um, you know, car dealerships to um, T-shirt shops and yogurt shops and everything supporting tourism and nothing to support um, the residents. And, um, you know, residents have to go out of their city to uh, go buy things. And so um, that's what's happening now. A lot of, uh, you know, go to Laguna Niguel, go to San Clemente, go to other places. And we don't want that to happen. We want to, you know, keep our businesses in town. Um, I struggled with, you know, is this pedestrian friendly? But then I look at that that piece of land, and what do you have? You have Ralph's, and that's a drive-in type business, and Rite Aid. Um, I've walked from my house over there on occasion. But, you know, if you're going to be carrying out big things, you're going to be, you're going to bring your car. Um, the recycling center, that's a drive-in type uh, uh, business. And, um, you know, BevMo is going to be also a drive-in business. Now, the question is, um, is this a big box you know, venue, and in 4,900 square feet, in my opinion, it's not. Um, if you want a big box store, you're going to have to be more than, you know, like 100,000 square feet or, or whatever. Uh, you need to have places to store your inventory, and, um, and you definitely need more parking for a big box store. So obviously, and that's one of the reasons why I, I brought up the uh, representative from BevMo to find out what is, you know, their their model of uh, their business model. Um, they are going to be restricted just by sheer floor space. Um, 
Now, do we want to see that, you know, BevMo sign right below the welcome to data point? Um, I'm not sure about that either. But if you're just looking at, you know, the, the, the code, the zoning codes and what's, the, what's an allowable use and what isn't, it is an allowable use. Now, there was some mention about um, non-competition clause, and that's really not within our purview, but I, you know, all I have to do is look at J.C. Beans and, and uh, Starbucks, and they're within, what, 300 feet of each other? And they're always busy. Um, so I think coffee and alcohol are two very popular <laughs> beverages, and you're going to, you know, see people uh, going to uh, different stores. But I do like the fact that it's, you know, I'm assuming this is, you know, taking the BEMO representative at his word that you know, they're going to be, at, you know, providing higher end liquor in bigger, you know, um, portions and not the magazines. And so there's going to be some a difference in what's being uh, offered for sale. So um, looking at that, I. Um, I too would deny the appeal and uphold the uh, director's decision, um, but I'd like to hear if my planning fellow commissioners have any more comments. Otherwise, we can have a motion. Chairman O'Connor, right, I'll motion. make the motion that we deny the appeal. Um, yeah, if you could read it from the resolution. So we're going to deny the appeal of the Community Development Director's decision to approve minor conditional use permit CUP0006M, allowing the establishment of a new alcoholic beverage outlet, new business beverages and more, Inc., BevMo, within a new commercial building approved by the city but not yet constructed on land located within the city's town center at 34215 Pacific Coast Highway. There's been a motion by the vice chair. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, Commissioner Claus seconded. Please register your votes if we get a voting thing. Oh, there we go. Wait. I gotta do it here because I'm marked as absent. Okay. I can just do a little voice thing. Okay. And it still says absent. That's right. <laughs> I'm willing to certify that I am not absent. <laughs> Oh, it is. It's going to come up with the dot. You need to end markers absent. Yes, Scott. Scott says absent. Right. Yeah. Okay. We can, okay. Do, we can do a voice thing. Are we going to do this again? Please register your votes. All right, that motion passes for uh, in favor and Scott McCann is absent. So we move on to our next agenda item, old business. There is no old business, new business. There is no new business and we have staff reports. So if uh, the director would like to. Um, just a reminder as you're leaving, please try to be quiet because we're trying to con finish our meeting. I just <clears throat> wanted to say that uh, former planning secretary Denise Jacopo wanted me to pass along um, her 
Uh, goodbyes to all of you. She, unfortunately, by the time learned of her departure, we'd had the last meeting canceled and so was unable to do so. And, and so her last day was uh, la last week. But um, Shana Sharkey is our new planning secretary and we are extremely happy to have her. She's already knows the city well, knows all of our systems. Um, she was able to do some training with Denise last week. She's a fast learner. And then I wanted to thank Bobby Ogan for helping us out this evening, former planning secretary and uh, deputy <laughs> city clerk. And um, so just wanted to say that. Thank you. Any other staff? Nothing? <laughs> OK. So uh, commissioner comments? Commissioner Murphy? Nothing? Vice chair? Yes. I'm long-winded tonight, I Good. guess. So I saw the new signage that was put up at, is it Violet Lantern with the parking signs? Oh, the directional signs? Yeah, to get you into, um, uh, what's the name of that restaurant? Swag, or, or the wine place, Lux? Lux? No, no, it's, it's uh, <laughs> the old Hollywood video site. Oh, uh, Tavern on the Coast. Yeah, so oh. there's, if you're headed, Southbound on PCH, there's signage now that directs you to their back parking. To their back. So is that indicative of what we might see up and down? Perhaps. I know that uh, they have had uh, definitely some issues with that, and we've been encouraging them to work with us within the parameters of the code to be able to get some directional signage. Okay. Yeah, because it looks like it's a sign on the pole now that staff put in, or are they snuck up there in the middle of the night and put it up? I don't know. We'll have to check with Public yeah, Works, I'm but I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure it was uh, the city. <laughs> okay. I thought it was great that, you know, it, that for the first time I saw a directory for parking in the downtown, I call it downtown, sorry, in the Lantern, soon to be known as the Lantern District. And I thought it was great, so I just wanted to comment on that. Fantastic, and I will I will add along those lines that there is um, a directional wayfinding signage program, comprehensive wayfinding signage program that's currently under design. Um, the first phase of that will be in town center, and there will be more of that sort of signage. Commissioner Claus, no more comments. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say that we're going to miss Denise. And, uh, and say welcome to you, uh, Ms. Sharkey. <laughs> we, we ha don't, usually we're, our meetings aren't this exciting, but. <laughs> so you, uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you notice that the attorney spoke the least? <laughs> I got through the whole meeting without saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll change that. <laughs> Does that mean you guys don't need me anymore? <laughs> I can go home you. earlier on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we go on to adjournment. The next regular meeting of the Planning Commission will be held on Monday, June 22nd, 2015, beginning at 6 p.m. or as soon thereafter in the City Council Chamber, located at 33282 Golden Lantern, Suite 210, in beautiful Dana Point, California. Have a good evening. Thank you.